Hey there everyone, I'm Awesome NES, and today I'm doing something that I, uh, I showed in my Yu-Gi-Oh! trailer that I would be doing, and that's a deck profile. I haven't done one yet, and I wanted to really do one now because I built a spiral deck for only $30. Um, that's not including the price of all the cards, it's just the cards I paid for. So yes, the price will actually be greater than $30 if you get all the cards that I have here and a few of the tech choices that I mentioned later but the, the the core of the deck itself which is really I only had a couple of just like small cards just to assist honestly when getting into it so the core of the deck itself only cost cost me about thirty dollars now it's not gonna be the best deck for sure but in terms of a budget spiral deck that can still participate at let's say locals or something which I've brought mine to does pretty well honestly I've beaten a couple pin magician players uh, I took on a burning abyss deck the I, I did lose to that but it's it's coming along so without any further ado let's go ahead and jump right into it so here is just a general view of what I've got here today uh, and I apologize that the quality is pretty bad uh, I'm using a five dollar uh, equip on uh, face cam facing the opposite direction uh, I'll probably do something about that eventually but let's jump into it and let's go ahead and take a look at our monsters we have 18 here uh, as you could probably guess they're mostly spirals uh, and since it is budget uh, there are not very many hand traps or anything like that in it so like I said, 18 monsters. First off, we have two copies of Spiral Super Agent. Uh, he's pretty important because, you know, that's like the main monster of the deck. You also get a free glance at the top of your opponent's deck uh, to figure out if you're going to be able to use any more of your effects this turn. Because uh, you get to call out a monster spell or trap, look at the top card of your opponent's deck, if it's that, you can special summon him, and then, because of his own effect also, you can pop some back row, which is pretty nice. Uh, and if you're wrong, at least now you know what the top card is, so that's going to work pretty well for your two copies of Spiral Tough, because you can, with him, call out spell, Monster Spell or Trap, and if it's one of those, you get to destroy basically any card on the field. And then we have two Spiral Sleeper, he's just other good destruction. And you can use the spells and traps that you end up dumping in the graveyard uh, for other reasons. Also, if you just have any other dead monsters that you know you're not going to be able to use anymore anyway, such as drone or quick fix. I know they have their own effects, but they still get banished anyway, so you might you might want to use them instead. Uh, we'll get to that though. Two copies of Spiral Gear Last Resort. Uh, I, I see a lot of people maybe only run one or maybe not at all. Uh, he's not like the best card, but he. He has that equip ability that prevents the monster from being destroyed by uh, basically anything. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then we have two copies of Spygal Misty. Again, just another check at uh, top of the opponent's deck. If you're right, you get some draw power off of it, which is really important in this deck because there are a few ways to brick, uh, and it's really never fun to brick, especially with this deck, because I know that it can do... Some decently powerful stuff sometimes, but when it breaks, it's just really depressing. So then we have two copies of Charming Resort Staff. Uh, I see a lot of people don't even run her, and I would understand why. However, if she is destroyed by battle, uh, you can get a free Super Agent out of your deck. And I think that's some pretty good search power. Uh, you're going to need that for this, this version for sure. And then we're going to get down to our one-ofs. We have one Spiral Quick Fix. Just searches any spiral gear card really nice uh, I like to go for either drone or fully armed a lot of the times speaking of that we have one copy of drone looks at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and you can put them in any order pretty nice one master plan I don't use her very often and honestly drawing her is very very much she's a brick yeah uh, then we have one copy of vortex trooper just some more of that draw power I was talking about and then our hand traps I only have two I have a ghost ogre and snow rabbit pretty good card probably one of the better 
of the two hand traps that are you know pretty constant right now I prefer it over Ash Blossom honestly and I'm not just saying that just because I don't have an Ash Blossom <laughs> uh, and then our last monster card is Effect Failure it's worked out for me a couple times uh, it only sucks that it's during your opponent's main phase rather than your own turn to prevent them from doing things to you. It'd be really nice to be able to use against a Vortex Dragon, say, during your, your turn. Wow, you can tell I'm pretty terrible at this. Let's go ahead and look at our spell cards. I have two copies of Spiral Gear Fully Armed. Set those over here. Now we have two Big Red. Oh, by the way, Fully Armed is going to be attack adds attack power also has non-targeting banishing effects uh, pretty nice and we have two copies spiral mission assault draw power terraforming two copies very important and there's another reason you can see this jar of avarice over here very good reason to have uh, multiple copies of terraforming you really want to get to that spiral resort and if something happens to Spiral Resort, a lot of times Jar of Avarice or something will bring it back. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. One Rota. Obviously add a Warrior. Now, here's something that kind of goes with that, but it's not really my favorite card. I'd really like to take it out at some point. But right now I have the Warrior returning alive. I don't really care for that card in this deck that much. Uh, it's not really that helpful because you're normally putting your monsters back into the deck or getting them back out of the graveyard anyway outside of with that card uh, so if I were to change that out I'd probably put a kaiju in there uh, I actually recently sold all of my kaiju cards to someone else and so I'm going to have to invest in grabbing another one to put in here uh, but I would definitely say get a kaiju to replace that. Here's another card I'm not super huge on, but it's helped me out in a couple situations. We have an enemy controller just to put a monster into defense so it can't hurt us, although that usually that doesn't come up. Uh, I've got a monster reborn. Is that one? So why not? Pot of Desires, more of that draw power I was talking about. Dark Hole. Now, with, uh, with Pot of Desires, though, too, you have to remember, uh, you only have one copy now of Spiral Resort, which is our important field spell. Uh, after the last ban list, it was put to one, and it is a very important card. You do not want to banish that, uh, or you will be probably hurting yourself. So let's go ahead and look at the last portion for the main deck. We have eight traps. By the way, I, I didn't mention I have 16 spells in here. Uh, I, like I said, I would like to cut that to 15 and put the monsters up to 19 with that kaiju. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the traps though. We have Jar of Avarice, pretty important because, like I said, if you lose something like uh, Spiral Resort or Quick Fix, even Drone, so like that, cards you only have one copy of, you can slap them back in the deck and you can get a free reuse off of them. Plus, it adds more draw power, which, like I said, pretty important. We have some Torrential Tribute. Uh, that one's just a nice card going first. I play a lot of back row in this, this deck. Oh, not really a ton, but just enough to stop my opponent from doing things. It, it's good against Pendulum Magicians for sure. Uh, here we go. We got Reckless Greed. I've found you don't really need your draw phases uh, while you have something like Double Helix and Last Resort, or not Last Resort, my bad, Resort on the field. Uh, you're doing plenty of searching by yourself, so you can skip those two draw phases with whatever two cards you get off of Reckless Greed most of the time. Uh, the few times I've used it, it's helped me win a game. So Now we've got more uh, Stopping Power, Mirror Force, one copy of Spiral Mission Rescue, or Recapture, excuse me. One copy of Spiral Mission Rescue, there we go. One spiral gear utility wire. Utility wire is pretty nice to put a hard to deal with monster back on top of your opponent's deck. It's really nice if it's a card that's hard to get out and they have to deal with that again. Although, you know, a lot of decks don't do stuff like that. Although, I have run into a Pendulum Magician deck or two that plays uh, Odd Eyes Lancer Dragon, I believe. And summoning him is not always the easiest condition to fulfill. 
And then finally, what's really nice against all those decks is sol this one copy of Solemn Warning. I would probably run more if I were to put more money into this. Uh, it's just It can stop an entire Pendulum Summon or just any kind of other summon in general. I've stopped an Electromite with it. It's fantastic. Just a really nice card to have. All right, now the, our last three cards here is just the extra deck. They're all Link Monsters, and obviously the one that we really need is Spiral Double Helix. Uh, you can call out a monster type or a card type and search basically any spiral monster. You can do a special summon it to a zone it points to that's open, or just add it to your add it to your hand if you call it right. Pretty nice. We have this one little underclock taker. I've come into him once, reduced the attack of a. Don't remember what it was. I remember it was important though. <laughs> So he, he's pretty helpful sometimes. And then Decode Talker. I have actually gone into Decode Talker one time to protect my board from being completely wiped uh, by a bunch of random effects going off. That helped uh, quite a bit. And that actually is going to do it for the Spiral deck. Now whether or not it's good, I'll get into that in just a second. Okay, now that the deck profile, or the deck list at least, is over, uh, I wanted to go ahead and talk about those cards that I said are going to cost a little bit more. First of all, I want to show Solemn Warning. Uh, I actually have one of these because a friend of mine bought a bunch of the Light Fairy Structure deck, had a couple extra copies, was like, I don't really need these, I don't play very many decks. So, hooked me up with one. So I want to give a shout out to her. <laughs> uh, next, Pot of Desires is one card I was showing off earlier. This came out of the Megaton last year, I believe. Uh, so, or maybe it was this year's Mega 10. Anyway, that's that's where that came from. So these are a little pricey. We got a Decode Talker. I know he goes for about six or seven dollars now. I believe he's getting reprint pretty soon. But this was out of the first Cyber Structure Deck Link Strike, I believe. It came out like in July. Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit. This is like a twenty dollar card now. Uh, this is the one that's really gonna put you up some money on that. Uh, that $30 number I was talking about. Yeah, it, uh, this one's out of a Mega 10 for sure. It was a promo card in the Kaiba Obelisk 10. So, it's pricey. If you could find one of those, I would say buy that to get to this. That's still going to cost you 20 bucks. So, the last one, this one isn't really that expensive. I think maybe it's like 2 or $3 now. Uh, but Reinforcement of the Army is a little bit pricey still compared to all the other cards and uh but double helix and super agent all that stuff they were counted into the 30 dollar count so just these five here are the only ones you need to worry about pushing you past that now next i wanted to talk about matchups with this uh, i've played against vindreds pendulum magicians bujins exodia deck uh that happened and a phantom knights deck now, the thing is, this this deck has actually won pretty consistently against most of those. And I forgot to mention that the Pendulum Magician decks I've played are actually two separate people with different styles of the deck. One of them runs the more the most modern style uh, with Electromite, Dark Worm, all that stuff. And when someone, uh, the other one was running a, an OTK, FTK kind of style, uh, except they do not have Electromite. They were substituting in a Decode Talker. Which actually leads them to have to make more plays in order to get to that. So that actually gives you a little bit more time to deal with it. Um, but I've consistently beaten both of those decks. I uh, have lost to the Electromite Magicians a few times. Uh, but that back row that I was talking about is actually really nice in stopping that. If you have, let's say, even just Ghost Ogre in your hand, when that Electromite comes out, you can discard Ghost Ogre. Sure, they go ahead and get to pop, uh, add that one over to their extra deck, but then they lose Electromite, so those zones aren't open, and they don't get that nasty looking board that they uh, come up with pretty fast. And then, uh, what happened at that time was that I had to play Torrential Tribute when they summoned Electromite, and then after that, uh, they were able to continue to go off, uh, basically, but once they got to me, they, went, they kind of overextended with all the cards they had. And I used a Mirror Force just to clean out, clean it all out and basically won in the next turn. Um, so, yeah, the, I know these aren't the optimal cards and like that isn't always going to happen. But 
that is really just the way I've found the back row cards are really, really important in order to get past stuff like that. Now, with Vindreds, uh, the deck was kind of ruined. Um, I think I was able to win most of the matches I played against it. We we tested it for a while against them because we've got a friend who really wants Vindreds to be good. Uh, and... You know, just be, being able to beat a deck that could beat Pendulum Magicians, you know, that's that's important. He could, he, he's he been able to beat the Pendulum Magician deck once or twice, I think. Really struggled with it, but was able to beat my Spirals once. And that's because uh, if you don't have Resort on the field, or even if you do have Resort on the field, he's going to he's gonna banish them with that with those Ritual Monsters. He can banish your, uh, your stuff <laughs> just in general pretty fast. Uh, it'll clear your field next thing you know, and then... Uh, you're dead <laughs> from there. So that is one thing to watch out for. I, I've i decided that uh, probably the best, better thing to do about that is to negate the summon a lot of the time, and that's with, you know, Solemn, solemn Warning. Uh, you can stop that ritual spell card from going off because if they send that monster off the field, uh, that's when that's when uh, bad worse things happen because they can just do it again. So stopping the ritual spell itself and not the monster from being summoned is... The better thing to do so overall is it good um i would say yeah i would say yeah it's good it's like i said before it's definitely not the best you're not gonna be winning like ycs's or <laughs> any kind of regionals or championships or whatever like that you you could probably take it to locals and beat a bunch of people with it maybe even win at locals with it um but I definitely don't think it's competitive enough to like say, "Hey, I'm gonna spend thirty dollars on a deck and then go win a big prize or something." Because you're you're probably not. But it is it is a pretty consistent uh, deck that I've got going here, and I've found that you know decks that I've struggled with specifically. I know I keep coming back to it, but that the Pendulum Magicians are the deck to beat right now. Uh, I play Dynamists and Cosmos mostly outside of this new Spiral deck, and the Dynamists have beaten. The Pendulum Edition deck once out of the mi twice. There we go, twice out of the many times uh, it has faced them. Though it's just definitely not consistent enough in order to stop it. Cosmos have won once out of the few times. Cosmos to me is a newer, pretty relatively new deck. Uh, it was able to beat Pendulum Magicians as well a handful of times. In terms of consistency. As many duels as this Spiral deck has had, it's actually won more games against Pendulum Magicians than it has lost. So I do think that it's capable of doing some stuff. And, and if it were actually made better, if you were willing to spend more money on it, maybe, you know, maybe not even a ton still, just push it up to like a hundred bucks or whatever from that 30, you would definitely, you might be able to do some more stuff with it. But I really think that's going to be all today, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it and any kind of changes you might make. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.